Welcome to In the Stacks with Julia and Christina from the Newfoundland and Labrador Public Libraries. Hi, my name is Julia. Christina and I are library technicians, co-workers, and friends. We love books and love talking about books. We wanted to share one of our book chats with you. So to start with, um, we're going to share, uh, take turns telling about books that we are currently reading or have just read or maybe are rereading. So the first book um, we're going to talk about today is called Dust and Shadow. And it is by Lindsay Fay. It's an account of the Ripper killings by Dr. John H. Watson. So, yes, you are correct. That is the John H. Watson, who is the sidekick of Sherlock Holmes. So it combines two of the fav my favorite things. I like Jack the Ripper-esque uh, kind of uh, mysteries, and I love Sherlock Holmes. So it combines two of those things that I really, really like. Um, and yes, the it author, does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so uh, the author does a really good um, job at recreating the kind of feeling of a uh, Sherlock Holmes book. So I, I found a little passage here that I wanted to share with you, and it goes like this. It's Dr. Watson explaining something. The following Monday, I returned from a game of billiards at my club to a curious spectacle in our sitting room. Holmes was stretched out upon the settee, feet propped on its arm, and head supported by pillows. With the neck of his violin wedged into the cloth of his sling, and his left hand scraping the eerie, vagrant chords, which I associated with his most melancholic level of meditation. I made from my bedroom, for his more abstract musical efforts were keenly disquieting, disquietening to my nerves, and I did not relish hearing them played left-handed, but he stopped me with a question. So, um, <laughs> I love yes, the way I, you finish that. I want to know what question he asked. Oh. <laughs> oh, the question is, and how is your friend Thurston? I turned to regard Holmes with the expression of utter bewilderment. How did you know I was with Thurston? Uh, so, again, you know, Holmes doing his Holmes thing, like finding, like, I don't know, a grain of sand on his lapel and said, okay, you were at the beach. But, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, he does, he does the Sherlock Holmes thing. It's what he does. So, uh, the book is full of... Holmes being Holmes and uh, Watson being his faithful sidekick, but they are um, on the trail of Jack the Ripper. And it's a really good book. It sounds so now, it's your... <laughs> now it's your turn, Christina. What are you reading? I am reading a book called The Coroner's Daughter um, by Andrew Hughes. Um, and the, the book takes place in Dublin in um, 1816. Um, so it's, you know, the, the 1800s um, when women were not supposed to be interested in certain things. They were supposed to um, basically just get married and, you know, have children and, and, and not be interested in um, a career or interested in certain subjects, that kind of thing. Um, so we're in that time period and the author does a really good job of, of bringing that time period to life. Um, but the main character is, um, as the title says, the coroner's daughter. So her father is the coroner, um, in Dublin. And so he, um, works a lot, um, with the police and with inquests, um, into, um, murders and suspicious deaths. Um, and she has a great interest in his work. She's really, she's really inquisitive and she's really smart. Um, and she is really, um, definitely not a woman of her time, we'll say. The people around her, her friends, her father, um, her father's assistant, they accept her as she is. They don't, they don't try, um, and force her to be something that she's not. Um, their only interest in getting her to kind of conform to society's ideas is for her own safety, um, because they know that allowing her to pursue certain things and certain interests could ruin her reputation. The first sentence, I'm going to read the very first sentence because it's a perfect introduction to her character. And this is, this is the very first 
Chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> For my 18th birthday, father promised me the hand of a handsome young man, which he duly delivered, mounted in a glass bell jar. <laughs> That's gruesome. <laughs> right? So there you go. There's a, there's a good introduction. That was her birthday present. <laughs> Happy birthday. Here's a dismembered hand. Yes. <laughs> now, Christina, you and I did not compare books at all. No. <laughs> we did we not. at all. So this is really weird because the next book that I have is about a girl who's doing something that at the time she shouldn't have wanted to be doing. Right. So the name of this book is called uh, Deadly Curious by Cindy Anstey. It's in the e-library, but it's like reminiscent of a Jane Austen um, novel with a dash of murder thrown in. Ooh. Exactly. So my character is named Sophia, and she wants to be a Bow Street runner. What's a Bow Street runner? So a Bow Street runner is a kind of like a plain clothes detective during the Victorian times. So they primarily were there to do um, like investigate robberies and that kind of thing. They would investigate murders or whatever, but it was primarily um, robberies and like vagrancy and that kind of thing. They would go around and they would um, track people down. So that was their job was to track people down that the law was after. So they were a little bit like a bounty hunter, but more like a plain clothes detective. So that's what she wants to be. And uh, she is really determined to be a uh, Bow Street runner. She knows that she's smart. She's very, again, like your character, very inquisitive, very smart. Um, and her cousin, Daphne, who is very dramatic, um, sends her this very dramatic letter explaining to her that um, something dastardly is going on and that she must come to the manor house to help her figure out, you know, what it is. And I think one of their cousins um, is accused of murder and she has to help. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm just getting started with it and it's really good. So like, like when you're describing your book and I'm thinking, we didn't, yeah, we didn't talk about this, did we? We no. did not. Did not talk we did this. not. No. Sometimes we're <laughs> getting into inside each other say, uh, sometimes. One thing about the coroner's daughter is that it's not like an edge of your seat thriller. Um, and I think a lot of people, when they pick up mystery novels, they, they expect like edge of your seat um, thrillers because that's a big trend in a lot of, a lot of mystery novels these days. But um, this one is very much um, kind of a slow build with the mystery. And, uh, and I know you enjoy mysteries like that. Um, yeah, you, you have that common. Um, and so, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, it's definitely a slow build and the two that you've described are sound similar. So this one, the deadly curious is more of a romance with a little bit of mystery thrown in. It's, uh, so she, she falls in love with, uh, the police constable and, um, tries to help him solve the crime. And, but it, it is very Jane Austen-y. So that made me think of you. <laughs> I do love so, a good Jane Austen. <laughs> but it, it is a little bit of fluff. It's a little bit fluffy, and that's okay. Sometimes you need a little bit of fluff. You do. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, sometimes you just need the fluff. So what's your next book? My next book is something that is, um, I wouldn't say fluffy, but it's definitely more of a, of a, um, of a romp. <laughs> I'm going to call it a romp. It's, um, it's, a, it's a fantasy book. And what the author does is she took Christian doctrine, um, Christian mythology, um, and also Norse and Greek mythology. And she built a fantasy world around those ideas and those um, beliefs and philosophies. Um, and so there's not a lot of world building involved. Um, she has this kind of idea um, that the reader already knows enough about those worlds that they don't need her to kind of go in and explain it all. So there's not a lot of um, world building involved. You can just enter right into the story. Um, it's called The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. 
Um, and I found it, I was just, I was in the mood for something fun, something easy, um, something that would just kind of, you know, get me, get me going. Um, and I was scrolling through Libby, um, and I stumbled across this and I was like, you know, that sounds like it might fit the bill. So let's give it a try. Um, and it totally did. It's just, it's a fun, easy, um, really easy to get into, um, really easy to kind of um, follow along with, um, but it's super fun. So the concept is that hell, um, the Christian hell that you think about, run by Lucifer, um, he has a library in hell where all of the- As you would. As you would, right? As you would. Yeah. Um, um, that sounds like a fun library for me to visit. <laughs> <laughs> so long as we don't have to work there, that's okay. Right? Um, yeah. And so in this library, um, it had the only books that it has on its shelves are books that have been unfinished or unwritten by authors throughout time. Um, and so it has, you know, books from, you know, the ancient times right up to modern day. Um, and they're all books that are not completed books, but they're, they're <laughs> embodiments of human imagination and human passion and, um, and human interest. And that's what, um, makes them powerful, um, to demons. Um, and so this librarian, she, she works in the library. She's the one in charge. Um, and so she's in charge of maintaining this collection. Um, and she gets, um, sucked into a, a mystery um, where she has to hunt down this very powerful uh, manuscript that could um, potentially cause a war between heaven and hell. The author um, does justice to all the mythologies that she borrows from, um, but at the same time creates a very unique world. So would you say uh, if somebody liked um, Good Omens by Neil Gaiman, would they like this book? I think so. Yeah. That's yeah. When you were describing it, that's what I rem that's what I envisioned, right? Yeah. Another author on the cover of the book um, that says, yeah, Shauna McGuire um, says that it's the Good Place, which is the TV show, um, mm -hmm. Law and Order bibliophile crime unit. Um, and, um, it's, it's, that's a hundred percent accurate. Like, it's just a super fun, um, read that is like an adventure story, a little bit of a mystery story, a little bit of a fantasy story, um, all like mixed up and mashed together. So it's, yeah, it was super fun. It's not, I wouldn't say it's fluffy, but it definitely has that kind of like easy, fun, fluffy feel to it. Oh, that sounds great. I love that. It is now on my to be read list. Right? I find during the pandemic and everything, my brain is just not, it's hard for me to focus. So uh, sometimes I, I like to go back. Books. And, and you know, if it's a book you really liked, it's no different than watching a rerun on television. Like how many times have I watched the same movie because I really liked the movie? It's no different. So the book that I'm currently rereading is called The Yard uh, by Alex Grecian. And I guess you can guess when it is set. It's, it's set during the Victorian era. And um, so it's right after the um, Jack the Ripper murders. <laughs> I know, I'm on a theme. Anyway, so um, it's right after the Jack the Ripper, Jack the Ripper murders. And um, Scotland Yard is kind of like at a very low ebb because they never, kept, they never caught Jack the Ripper. And um the public has no faith in them at all anyway so it um uh, it follows it's a series of books it's like five or six books in the series and and the yard is the first one and it's about um detective william day he's the main character him and his wife his wife is like a uh high class or higher class um woman who has married down to marry him he's very aware of that he's aware that his her family doesn't think he's good enough for her. And um, so he's always trying to prove himself. And, uh, but he's like a super straight arrow. He's like really honest, very hardworking, and um, just a, like a general good guy. And he, the, he, the story starts off with a body has been discovered in a steamer trunk at train station. And so when they open it up, 
uh, this body has been compacted and put into the steamer trunk. And when they open it up, they realize that it's one of their own. It's one of uh, a detective from Scotland Yard who has been murdered and shoved into the steamer trunk. And all throughout the story, they're trying to find the killer who seems to be targeting uh, Scotland Yard detectives. And uh, it's a really good book. Uh, Alex Christian does a really good job of of doing the, like the setting is really well described and it kind of puts you in that kind of like foggy, smoggy, dirty Victorian era city. So you like, you're, you really get into it when you read the book. Um, and the whole series is really well done. Um, and the reason I'm rereading it is because um, I never got to read the last book. So now I have to start at the beginning and go all the way through so I can read the last book because it's been so long since I read it. And uh, so now that's what I'm doing. I love rereading books. I love rereading books and uh, I love rereading series and getting to know all the characters all over again. And I always find like the first time you read it, um, you're so interested in the story that sometimes you miss things. Um, so the second time you read it, you always, you always pick up little bits of information that you missed the first time. Yeah, or like if you're watching, um, you know, a comedian and he's telling a joke and you're laughing and then he tells another joke, you miss it because you're laughing at the first joke he told. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it. Exactly. So what's your what's your last book? So my last book is um, another fantasy book, and it's one that you have spent um, many, many times uh, recommending to me uh, over the years that we've known each other. Uh, because you know that, that I, this is another common thing that we share. Um, it's a bit of a fairy tale retelling-esque type of book. Um, and you love those and you know that I also enjoy them. And so you've recommended this to me multiple times. Um, it's called Reckless by Cornelia Funk. I'm so glad you finally listened. <laughs> well, your recent video on our YouTube channel, the NLPL YouTube channel, where you talk about fairy tales for grownups, um, you mentioned this book, and um, it inspired me because I needed a new audiobook. Um, I always, <laughs> I always have. I don't know if you've noticed, but I always have um, at least three books going on at the same time. One is always print, one is always an ebook, and one is always an audiobook. <laughs> you are nothing if not diplomatic. So I always have at least one of each type going on at the same time, um, and so the Corner's Daughter was my print book, and the um, Library of the Unwritten was my ebook, um, and Reckless is my current audiobook read. I'm about halfway through, um, and it's uh, it's a super fun read. I can totally see Yay. why you love it and why you recommended it to me so often. Uh, the audiobook is narrated by Elliot Hill, and they do a really good job of bringing the, the story to life. Um, and the premise is that this... Um, this child, he's a child when he discovers it, but he, he becomes a man, obviously. Um, his name is Jacob Reckless, and he discovers a magic mirror in his father's study. Um, and it's a mirror where um, when you touch it a certain way, you enter into a fantasy realm. Um, and in this fantasy realm, um, what Cornelia Funk has done is she has taken all of the fairy tales that you know, all of the, the stories that you remember from your childhood, and she's built a fantasy world within them and around them. Um, and it's its own unique world, but every once in a while she'll, she'll drop in a little Easter egg from a, a, a fairy tale that you remember from your childhood. And That's I my find favorite them, part. I know, right? I find them so funny because you're you're so I'm listening to this this book and I'm just so engrossed in this world. And then she'll just drop in a mention of a glass slipper or <laughs> a princess that was put to sleep for a long time. And I'll start laughing because I'll be like, Yeah, I remember that story. Or you'll come across a, a, a cottage in the woods and you're like, hmm. This one looks really familiar. <laughs> Is that gingerbread? I think so. Yeah. And the main character, Jacob, um, he is on a quest to save his brother 
who's being turned into one of the magical creatures that has that inhabits this realm. Um, he was injured, and when you're injured in this way, you turn into the creature that injured you. It's just a fun adventure fantasy story, and I can 100% understand why you love it and why you recommend it to me so often. <laughs> so you can still get me to read it. <laughs> oh, yay! I'll have to find something else to put on your list now. <laughs> Definitely. Well, this has been lots of fun, Christina. We got to do this again, and um, we plan on doing it once a month and getting together, and we promise not to share our books before we meet. Ooh, that's a good rule. Yes, not to share our books before we meet, and then that will make it nice and fresh for the conversation. And it was really weird that we had like similar books that we were reading at the same time. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs>